What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. In this session, we'll be learning how to draw XT diagrams or XT graphs. And as always, I'll be focusing on a step-by-step -step approach. At the start, the exercises will be very basic, but they will get progressively more difficult towards the end. Feel free to skip around according to your own level. You will find the timestamps of each exercise in the description or the comments. And as always, if you learn something along the way, feel free to just give the video a like, so it will be more likely that other people will find this material as well. With that out of the way, let's dive right into it. So first of all, what is an XT graph? It is a graph with on the horizontal axis time and on the vertical axis space. So basically place. What does this now entail? We want to achieve a more compact representation of a scenario where an object moves in time. When time goes on, the object changes position. So in that sense, an XT graph represents the motion of an object. And what we want to do in this video is try to translate a physical scenario to an XT graph. For this first example, we have just someone starting at position S from start and he just remains at rest. He doesn't do anything. So he just stands there and doesn't move. So how is this translated onto an XT diagram? Well, we know that time always goes on whether we are moving or not. However, the X here or the place where we're standing does not move. So what this means is that if we are starting at position X, if time goes on, X doesn't move. So this graph doesn't move in the vertical direction because X or position doesn't move. This is the simplest case of an XT graph, basically just a straight line, which indicates that we didn't move at all. How does this change? Where we're not just standing still, but we're actually walking somewhere, for instance. So let's say we're starting at position S and we're just walking at a uniform speed to the final position. So this is represented on the XT graph, T and X. Well, as always, we start at position X. And now somewhere along the line, we will be ending at position F, at the final position. But how do we get there? Well, our X coordinate or our place changes uniformly because we're walking at a uniform speed from S to F. It changes very slowly but surely and in the end we end up in F. So as time goes on, on the horizontal axis, X also increased because we started at the start and we are now at this point, which is our final position. So our graph ba basically becomes a simple straight line going from S to F. And this is markedly different from our previous graph, right? Because in the previous case, X didn't change over time. Whereas now X did change over time. Let's now look how this compares when we are in another scenario. In this scenario, we are running from S to F. Again, we start at S and we end up in F, our final destination. So how does this translate to a XT graph? Well, let's just draw our axis first. And now we have here our S and here our F again. These don't change. However, now we get to our final destination much quicker in much less time. If we compare it with the previous example, we got from S to F in a time, let's say 10 seconds. But now let's say we run twice or at least twice as fast as we walk, we will see that our graph will be much steeper. So we get to F much quicker. And this is represented by our graph being much steeper. Let's say we do it in three seconds because we run on average three times as fast as we walk. 
So then again, we see that we arrive at f, but we arrive at f in a much shorter time, which is designated by here this interval on the t-axis is much shorter. And this translates in our graph, our actual line on the xt diagram, to be much steeper, because we get from s to f in a much smaller time. These are all uniform motions where we go from S and we end up in F. And these are all clearly representable either in this, well, scenario with a stick figure, but also on this XT diagram. However, what is not represented in these stick figures, or not easily represented, is if we run towards our final destination. So here we run but then we walk back. So now we go from S to F, but we also go back from F to S again. We make a round trip. Now this is very difficult to represent on this, on this stick figure diagram, but let's now see how this represents on this XT graph, which also will show the strength of this XT graph over the, well, the diagram with the stick figures. So again, we start at S and F will be here. So now as time goes on, we run from S to F in our initial phase. And this is basically just this case that we had before, right? So it will be the same. So we will get a very steep slope of our initial running phase. We start from S and we end up in F. And let's say we do this again in around three seconds. And now we walk back from F to S. So we start here and we walk back to S. So how does this look now on our graph? Well, we know that if we walk, our slope will be much less steep. Now what it means is that this will occur. So let's say that we do this distance in 10 seconds, as we did here. That means that at t equals 13, we will arrive again at our initial, initial position, s. So walking back from f to s in 10 seconds will correspond to this slope, which is much less steep than this initial running phase because at this point, we are back at S. In this period, these three seconds, we run from S to F, from initial start position to final position. And then in this 10 seconds, we walk back from F to S, right? And this is shown in this diagram here, because we are initially running fast from S to F, and then we are walking very slowly from F to S again. So we get this, this shape right here. Let's take it a little bit further now. The fifth exercise is this one. We run from S to whatever, then we take a pause, and then we run along further to F. So here we run, then we take a pause and then we run to F. So how does this actually translate in this nice XT diagram representation? So let's see how this goes. We have time here, we have X here. Again, our initial position is S and this time our final position is F. So let's see, we first run halfway and we know from this example and from this example, that running corresponds to a steep slope. So we run halfway, which is here, and halfway between S and F is this point. What we then do is we pause. And we know from our initial example that pausing is basically resting and it's doing nothing. So we get this flat curve because X does not change over time. What this means on our graph is that we get a period where our curve is flat. 
and let's say we we first run two seconds and then we pause let's say 10 seconds so this will be 12 seconds and then we are at this point this midpoint and then we just run from our midpoint to our destination in an exactly same fashion as we did our first run what we see is again that we have a running phase here where our slope is very steep then we have a rest phase here where our slope is flat so x doesn't change because we're not moving and then we have a running phase all the way from our midpoint to our final point and this is basically how this graph with pause looks like as a final exercise we're going to go the other way around we're going to start from an xt diagram and we're going to try to explain what really happens i've drawn an xt diagram here and we're going to explain what happens so again we see ah we start from s from our starting point what happens then is that we have this slope here and it's quite steep so we can say that well basically we are running here up until this point in time we're running then we see ah a piece of flat curve well this means we are from this point to this point we are resting we're pausing whatever we're not moving either way and then we see ah we're again running with the same slope as we had here so we're running again at the same pace as we were before so basically up until now we just have this graph this scenario we run we pause and we run let's now see how it goes on how we see here a very shallow slope which indicates that we are walking and we're not walking forward but we're walking backwards because x is again decreasing here note that from here to here x increases but now we see a decrease in x which means that we're basically walking our way back so here we're walking back and then we see this very funny tail here which is a very very steep slope much steeper than we had here here or here and this very steep slope it decreases in x so we're still going in the direction towards our initial point and we see that it's very steep so we could for example say that in this very short interval we're really sprinting we're running our lungs out just to get to our initial point again because if we see here our initial point well that's also where we end in this last exercise we looked at what this scenario could be so let me just summarize it again we start from s our initial point and then we run up to some point then we have a little rest and we just run again at the same pace until we come at this point where we for some reason thought to return back home or back to our s because our this is our maximum x which means that this is the furthest that we've gone then we started walking back probably because we were very tired of running there but then in this very last period we i don't know we looked at our watch and saw that we would be late so we just decided to sprint the last few meters home and we arrived at s in the end so note that in all of these exercises that we did our curves or our st or our curve on the diagram was a straight line and even if we had different segments they were both straight lines for example here and here and this last exercise this entire scenario that we constructed from this xt diagram it all had straight lines what this means is that our motion was uniform so we just started at a specific velocity or speed and we ended at the same velocity or speed for example in this case we're starting to walk at x max and we walk at a uniform uh, velocity each time so at a, as a teaser for another video a upcoming video let's think about what it means if our curve is curved if it is smooth and not exists from straight lines so you might already guess that this has to do with acceleration 
And this is a, well, a topic for another video. So this brings us to the end of the video. And I hope you learned something. And in specific, that you grasp the power of translating scenarios into XT diagrams. If you like this video, don't hesitate to actually give it a like. This makes it more likely that other people looking for these subjects actually find these videos. And if you want to see more or get notified about future videos, also consider subscribing. And with that out of the way, I hope you learned something and I see you guys in the next one. Bye.